Hey there, welcome back to Love More to Live, where we talk about getting healthy so that all your relationships can be healthy. I'm Jenny, and today I'm talking about uh, a topic that is going to be probably a little bit difficult for me and something I've been praying about for a long time. Let me ask you this question. Are you emotionally healthy? I wasn't always emotionally healthy, and today I'm going to be telling you why and how I became healthy. And to be honest, I'm actually still working on getting healthy, but I'm a long way down the road. I'm going to be talking about my story of emotional abuse and how I broke free from that. If you haven't yet subscribed, now may be a good time to do that. And don't forget to hit the bell so that you can receive notifications of future videos. And so let's dive into this topic that I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit apprehensive to be honest, but I'm diving in because I feel really convicted that I need to talk about this to share my story because I know that there's someone out there who needs to hear this. So this video is the reason why I'm so passionate about healthy relationships because I wasn't and I was messed up <laughs> and some days I still think I'm just so messed up. <laughs> How am I ever going to get get healthy? Like I said, I've prayed about this. I've thought about it for a long time and it does feel risky. I've been afraid of making myself vulnerable. I've been afraid of being misunderstood. I've been afraid of what other people will think of me, of my family. And I know that some people will not be comfortable with what I'm going to share in this video. Maybe this video is not for you and I don't mind. You don't have to watch it if, if you're not comfortable. And my reasons for sharing what I'm going to share today is not for the sake of revenge or just blurting out family secrets or um, just trying to be sensational. I, I, I want this to be useful to someone who's going through the same thing I've been through. So let me say it. <laughs> Let me be brave. I was emotionally abused by my mom. And before I go any further, let me just clarify something. I've made a video before and you can check that out here about honoring your parents as an adult child. And yeah, you go, go watch that and see what I say about that there. But the Bible does tell us to honor our parents, but that doesn't mean we can't speak about the mistakes that they made in, in a respectful way for the purpose of helping others. Honoring your parents means living an honorable life and speaking, sometimes it means speaking your truth and that's okay. I want to emphasize that I understand why I was emotionally abused. My mom had her own brokenness and she developed coping skills as a result of that brokenness and unfortunately that impacted me, my siblings and our whole family. Did she intend to hurt me? No. Did she intend to damage me? Never. Never. Did she love me? Absolutely. Was she a Christian? Yes. <laughs> but being a Christian does not equal being emotionally healthy. And that's such an important thing that we forget. Sometimes we think because we've become a Christian, we're fine. That we're healthy, but we're not necessarily healthy. So damaged people dam damage other people. Hurting people hurt other people. And th that is one of the reasons why I created the personal health assessment. Uh, I'll leave a link to that in the, in the description box below. You can sign up to our website and receive that. It'll help you to figure out whether your relationships are healthy or not. Does speaking about this mean that I haven't forgiven? I have forgiven. I have forgiven. I do not hold any resentment or bitterness towards my mom. I would have had to see change before I could safely allow myself to enter back into real relationship with her and unfortunately I didn't see that right up until the time before she died the last conversation we had was emotionally abusive and yes I have had to grieve differently than other people grieve over their loved one's death because the relationship with my mom was not a healthy one I'll leave a link to the blog post I wrote about this in the description box below as well Okay, so what is the impact of emotional abuse? It'll often leave you feeling anxious, frustrated, confused, maybe even angry, misunderstood, sometimes depressed, condemned, worthless. And if you have all those kind of feelings in a relationship, the chances are high that your relationship is emotionally abusive. When emotional abuse is ongoing, uh, a person may lose their entire sense of self who they really are without a single mark or a bruise. And research indicates that the consequences of emotional abuse 
are just as severe as those from physical abuse. And I'll leave a link to that study below. So emotional abuse, and you know, it's so often overlooked because we don't get bruises. We don't have evidence that we are broken and damaged and hurting. And so we think, oh, well, it's fine. I'll just get over it. But it has a, a very, very huge impact on your life. This thing of losing your sense of self, I so relate to this because I lost who I was. I never actually developed a sense of self and who, who I was and what I like and what I don't like and, and a, a sense of individuality. I just never got that. I never, I never developed that. I lived in relation to my mom and what she wanted and what pleased her. So I didn't know what I wanted or liked most of the time and I lost myself. So this has impacted my life hugely and it's, it's, it messed me up a lot, it messed me up a lot. And it's affected how I relate to my husband, how I relate to my children, how I relate to other people, how I relate to circumstances. It's impacted everything in my life. I learned to shut down feelings to survive. I repressed my emotions and you know, I was always a happy little kid. I was always accommodating. I'll show you a picture of myself. I always just wanted to please and I wanted to make people happy and I wanted to make my mom happy and so I lost myself because I was so busy trying to please her. Let's look at some specific ways that emotional abuse happens. So it's one of the hardest forms of abuse to recognize because it can be very subtle and it messes with your head and uh, you, know, you land up thinking well I'm the one with the problem probably and you may feel so wounded by the relationship with the person and yet you don't feel you can leave because you're too afraid to leave the relationship. And so there's this almost like this enmeshment and entanglement that happens with the person that's emotionally abusing you. The person may twist your words around and make you look like the bad one and you're the one with the problem. We need to pray for you. You have a spiritual problem. That's called gaslighting, by the way. They may blame someone else for their behavior and it's never their fault. So when I went to my mom and I tried to point things out to her that, that she was doing that were hurting me, she just, um, she did not take ownership. She blamed, she projected onto others, she blamed other people and it was never her fault. This made it much harder for me to break free and heal because was always this entangled thing of well maybe I am the one that's wrong maybe I am the one that's crazy maybe I am just messed up and I'm you know you start believing it after a while an emotional manipulator uses guilt to get you to comply they'll, they'll say you aren't being loving you aren't being you aren't being a Christian you're hard and cold and you don't care about me so they'll use they'll use all sorts of things to get you to comply with what they want you to do. They may control subtly through the silent treatment, leaving you with like, what did I do wrong? I have no idea what I did wrong and I don't know how to fix it. They may sigh or give you a look and you just know, okay, I've overstepped you, but I don't know, I'm not quite sure what I've done wrong. In other words, there's like a lack of clear boundaries and healthy conversation and communication. I experienced control, I felt controlled even when far away from my mom, I felt guilty if I did something that I knew she wouldn't approve of, even if it was, but it wasn't even bad. I just knew that she wouldn't do it. In other words, so again, I didn't develop that sense of what is okay for me to do. And I lived in reference to what my mom wanted, what pleased her, what she thought, her values, her principles, and I never developed my own. And in fact, <laughs> one day I took a book out of the library and I started reading this book and I was like, oh. it was a true story by the way, but it was about someone who'd been through trauma and bad experiences and it was quite graphic. And I knew that my mom would not read that kind of book. But as I was reading it, I was thinking, oh, maybe I shouldn't be reading this. Oh no, I felt so guilty. And then I was, at this, by this time I had already started uh, seeking God's will for my life instead of just trying to please my mom. And so I prayed and I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? is it okay if I read this book and I felt the peace of God coming into my heart saying it's fine read it I want you to see what people go through and so I read it but all the while I was thinking Lord are you sure is this okay are you sure it's okay and every time I just got that confirmation it's fine go ahead develop your own sense of self develop your own ideas and your own values and your thoughts Another thing an emotionally abusive person will do is they will uh, they impact the emotional climate around them. So 
when the person is angry or upset, the ho everybody knows it. Everybody knows it and the atmosphere is as thick as anything you could cut it with a knife. And then the manipulated one, being me, would try to find some way to equalize this emotional climate and make it better. And the quickest route is to make the manipulator feel better. So you do whatever you can to help them be happy. And so again, this becomes an enmeshed situation and you lose yourself. And you forget, you abandon your own needs, you forget you even have needs because you're so busy trying to make sure that this other person is happy. And you become, in a sense, responsible for their happiness. Emotional manipulators often attempt to establish intimacy through the early sharing of deeply personal information that makes you feel sorry for them. So they'll share, oh, I struggle so much, and you know, it's been so hard, my life has been like this and this and this. And immediately you're like, oh, I feel so bad for you, and I feel so sorry for you. They may use spiritual manipulation to get you to comply, and they may quote the Bible and lecture you, come across as spiritually superior, and leave you feeling condemned when you do wrong with no hope. So this is, it borders on spiritual uh, never mind bordering on it is it is actually spiritual manipulation as well because they will use the Bible to get you to comply with what they think you should be doing. They may f minimize your physical ailments and neglect your emotional needs. They make they may make you feel guilty uh, for growing up and leaving home. That's what I experienced when I grew up and finally left home. I felt bad for leaving home because my mom fell apart. To be honest, I often felt like. Wow, isn't she happy that I've grown up and I'm starting my own life and doing things and whatever. It was always just about how sad she was that we'd all left and how lonely she was and how difficult it was now that we'd left home and it was so hard for her and it was traumatic and it was just, and it leaves you feeling like, okay, so should I have stayed at home then? What? <laughs> An emotionally abusive person may use you to fulfill their own unmet emotional needs and so they almost feed off their relationship with you to meet their own unmet needs. They may discount your feelings and not allow you to feel what you feel. You shouldn't be angry. The Bible says you shouldn't be angry so you must stop being angry. It's bad and they don't validate your feelings at all. They don't say okay so why are you feeling the way you do? You know I understand that you're angry. What's behind that anger? Let's talk about it and then let's give that anger to God. Instead, all you get is, you shouldn't be like this. So, you know, this sounds very negative and horrible and it was horrible to live it, to be honest. And am I saying that my mom didn't care for me at all? No, I'm not saying that. The thing about abusive situations is that the person isn't all bad. They're not abusive all the time. They very often can be very nice people especially to those outside of the relationship that they're in. So my mom always made good food. She sewed clothes for us and for our little dollies. I'll put a picture in here of us, my, my two sisters and I in our little dresses, matching dresses that my mom made for us. She, my mom chose to be a stay-at-home mom so that she could be at home when we were, got home from school and so that we could have that stability and that security. My mom tolerated a lot of noise in the house and she enjoyed a good joke. She was sociable and she was friendly. It doesn't mean that she was a completely bad person, but there were aspects of the relationship that were just completely unhealthy because of her brokenness. So how did I break free from emotional abuse? And let me just put, put it out there. I'm still breaking free, but to a large degree, I have broken free. So my road to freedom started when I learned how to surrender to God moment by moment. And I'm gonna put a link to the video um, below about surrender because that is a thing that changed, revolutionized my life and began to help me to develop a sense of self and who I am under God. So it began with surrendering to God moment by moment and saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? Not what I think other people are expecting of me, but what do you want for me now? So as I began to surrender to God and cooperate with him, I began to develop an opinion. I began to think for myself and I began to stand up for myself. And I began confronting my mom which didn't go down well um, that was that was very hard it was very hard so I did hard things I began to like myself because I was growing and developing and changing and becoming a person in my own right I grieved because I realized I was years behind in my personal development 
I had lost so much because I was just basically an empty shell, reflecting someone else's thoughts and feelings. So I began to work on my character. I took short courses. I began to speak in public. I started writing and later started the blog, the Love More to Live blog. And I built the website all by myself <laughs> with Google and the Lord. <laughs> and so, yeah, I began to just become somebody and not an, instead of just an empty shell. And just by the way, Richard really appreciates the fact that I've grown as a person and that I'm now somebody with an opinion that has value. Yeah, and I like myself better too. Let's look at six ways to deal with an abusive situation. Con number one is confront it. So I had multiple hard conversations with my mom. I regret not being firmer with her and more decided and honest about the boundaries that I was setting. I was still so stuck in feeling responsible for her happiness and I feared her reaction. So that's why this video is so important for me because it's part of, it's another step in breaking free from the fear that I've lived under all my life. And I believe that this is the source of my people pleasing. I, I can't bear to have someone with it, that someone upset with me, so I'll apologize even if I'm not wrong. I, I, I just try and do all I can to fix the relationship because I can't bear the, the displeasure. And so I will deny my own feelings and my own perspective just to keep the peace. And I've abandoned myself to please someone else. So number one is confront it. Number two is name it. Uh, slowly it began to dawn on me that I had been I had actually been emotionally abused <laughs> and I began to call it what it was and that just that in itself was very freeing that I was able to actually name what I'd been through and you know it was so what I'd been through was so felt so normal because I grew up with it by being honest about about what what it was empowered me and it made me feel like I was taking control back of my life I still struggle to maintain that freedom and Galatians 5 verse 1 comes to my rescue very often and it says stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage and that's like God's reminder to me hey don't go back there you're slipping back into your enmeshment tendencies and your people pleasing tendencies come out of that and stay under me under God keep your freedom maintain your freedom number three is establish boundaries so I began to withdraw from my mom uh, a lot I spent less time with her because I didn't feel emotionally safe around her the minute I got too close to her she would just sort of overshadow me and feed off me emotionally so I the only thing I regret about my boundaries is, is that I wish I had been more honest with her about what I was doing and why I was doing it I was still so afraid of her response that I couldn't actually even get to that point where I said, I'm withdrawing from you because you are doing this and this and this to me. I just withdrew instead of saying why I was withdrawing. And this only gave my mom more reason to believe that I was the one with the problem. I had this huge problem and we needed to pray for me. She, they need, she, you know, she needed to pray for me. It just made me more angry and hurt. So when you're establishing boundaries, state clearly what you will do when you feel abused and then follow through with it. Don't enforce, don't put a boundary in place that you can't enforce. Number four is stop taking the blame. An abusive person is abusive because they choose to be, not because of anything that you've done. You cannot control their actions and you're not responsible for their choices. You can only fix and control yourself. So don't allow them to put the blame on you and you accept that blame. Stop taking the blame. Number five is make your mental and emotional health a priority. Do the work of healing and restoration so that you can be the person and the individual that God intended you to be. Deal with your stuff. If you don't, you're probably going to project, oh, no, not probably, you will project your damage onto your spouse in your current, on any of your current relationships because that's what happens. And it's going to affect how you raise your children too. Find someone, find someone to talk to you about your stuff and start working on your stuff. If you, want, if you want to make an appointment with us, with me personally or with Richard and I together to help you work on your relationship, how to help you to work on healing, just contact us and we can set up an appointment. Number six is get support. So find someone safe to talk to who will support you on your journey to becoming healthy. Ask this person to be honest with you and to tell you when you're misjudging or overreacting to a situation because that does happen. Because of our damage, we sometimes respond 
in a way that's not healthy to situations that are actually quite normal. And we overreact to a situation where a nor just a normal calm reaction would be quite fine. So get someone who, who, with whom you can be accountable and who will say to you, who's honest enough to say to you, hey, I think you're overreacting there. Let's talk about this. So be sure to check out the, the videos in the links below um, of being walked over, how I, stopped being, how I stopped people walking over me, and also that surrender video. And uh, I, would, I just want to say to you, if you're stuck in an emotionally abusive relationship, begin doing the work to become a person in your own right. Um, it begins with becoming strong yourself on the inside. And as you become stronger, you'll be able to stand up for yourself. And that is your God-given duty. That's your, your privilege and your duty to be, you're accountable to God for the way other people treat you. So do the work of becoming healthy and stop allowing people to push you around, to abuse you, use you, and take advantage of you. It's gonna take work to heal from the wounds of emotional abuse because they can be very intertwined in your life and, and hidden away in, in your reactions and your responses. But, the, but God is faithful. He says in Jeremiah 30 verse 17, for I will restore health unto thee and I will heal thee of all thy wounds. That is a promise that I've gone back to over and over again, claiming that promise that God will do for me what I cannot do for myself. He is the healer. He will heal of all my wounds. And that includes spiritual and emotional wounds. But to be honest, breaking free has been rough. And like I said, my mom passed away a few months ago. I've had to deal with that fact that, that our relationship was never healthy and it can never be healthy because she's gone. And so my grief is not so much over that fact that she's gone, but over the fact that I didn't have a relationship with her that I could have had. So it's grieving the loss of a healthy relationship that just never existed. So I guess that's my story. And I hope and pray that it will be helpful to at least one person out there who's struggling with emotional abuse and not knowing how to get out of it. So if you haven't yet subscribed, now's the time to do that. And we'll see you in the next video.